David Lesperance is an attorney. He's one of the world's leading international tax and immigration advisors. Welcome, David. Nice to be here, George. Excited to have you on. Tell us a little bit about your personal life, some more about your work, why you do what you do. Sure. I'm uh, not American, but I'm about as close as you can be without having the Big Eagle passport. I grew up in Windsor, so I'm a child of the auto industry. Father would wake up every day and go and work in Detroit, uh, what was quite common. Um, his golf and bridge buddies were the equivalent at Ford and Chrysler and AMC back in those days. What was also quite common um, was when mothers would feel the contractions, they would run over to Henry Ford Hospital and have what they now call anchor babies. Um, I'm the third child. So when my mother got pregnant with me, the doctor said, look, you, you're, you have RH blood compatibility. This child's going to need blood transfusions. Don't be screwing around driving across the bridge. So literally the only reason I don't have an American passport is because my parents had incompatible blood. Hmm. Um then uh, going through law school, I needed a job. My father knew all the people at Customs because he was implementing the auto pack for GM Canada. So I worked in the booth at the Windsor Detroit Tunnel, busiest car entry. A couple of days of sweltering in my little booth in the sun, seeing the immigration people with their feet up reading the newspaper. I thought that would be the job for me. <laughs> uh, we then uh, moved to Toronto. I did the same thing at the busiest airport, uh, Toronto Airport, Pearson International. And then I saw the light or went to the dark side in 1990, got called to the bar. Uh, the other part of my background is I swear my siblings and I didn't go out nightclubbing looking for Europeans to dance with, but... My sister married a Latvian, then a German. My brother married an Italian. I married a Scotswoman, then a Pole. And my younger sister married an Irishman. So um, I'm the only one of the four of us to actually pick up and move to Europe. But I can tell you all of my nieces and nephews have done everything from kind of gap years, study, to working and living and working in, in Europe. So very familiar with the lineage citizenships. Um, got called, as I said, to the bar in 1990. My law school study partner went and worked for a big American firm called Baker McKenzie in Hong Kong. That was prior to the 97 handover. So I've been dealing with kind of Hong Kong, China, Asia clients for three plus decades. Canada back then had a early, what they call now a golden visa program. So this was before, during and after the Gulf War, uh, running up and down the Gulf. If this is Tuesday, it must be Bahrain, meeting all the private banking clients for HSBC and Standard Charter. And I did my first US expatriation because uh, the U.S. has this original or unique, I should say, uh, original and unique uh, citizenship-based taxation. Everybody else in the world says, if you live here, according to whatever their residence is, maybe a day count or a connections test, we'll talk about taxes. If you're an American citizen, even if you've never set foot in the United States, maybe you got that from a parent or, you know, you're 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 born when your parents were in the United States on some temporary purpose and you've long lived in somewhere else, U.S. says still you're a U.S. person for tax purposes. You have full U.S. Uh, tax liability and um, financial reporting requirements. So if you want to leave the Canadian or anybody else's tax net, you simply move and don't spend too much time back in the country you just left, whereas for an American they, if they move abroad, they either have a choice of being an American living abroad and but fully tax compliant, or we can use it as part of an expatriation strategy to permanently leave the U.S. tax system. Death and taxes, David. Death and taxes. Um, I, well, I don't want to bore you. I once got retained by a client who wanted me, you know said, I'm going to freeze myself. How do I leave money for myself in the future? And I, it was fascinating how many heads on the angels on the head of a pin, but ultimately he said, no, there's not a way we could do this. So deal with the taxes, but death still eludes us. Events certain with an uncertain event date. So we got called to the bar in 1990. So it's been a couple of yes. years and you've been fascinated or involved with immigration or people moving between countries for, for a while before that. And now mm -hmm. here we are in 2023. What, 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 what's your thoughts? Well, it's, it's interesting in 
So I've been doing expatriation. Um, that was mostly estate tax driven in the early days. Uh, people wanting to, uh, you know, preserve their estate from U.S. estate tax. And then I started doing what Tom Wolf called Masters of the Universe, who had a completely different focus. So VCs, PEs, private equity, and hedge hedges. And they were looking at how do I get net closer to gross by Q4 of next year? Completely different focus. Um, one of the things that you know has really changed in the last few years are clients who are looking for not necessarily expatriation, but they're looking for some type of options. And this is a bit of a dangerous analogy for a Canadian to be using these days, but imagine you're in a wildfire zone. And what are your wildfire concerns? Well, you may say, well, the Democrats are going to hit the trifecta in November of 2024. And I look at the Green Book and, you know, that's going to hit me tremendously from a tax point of view. I've got other clients who say, oh, my God, the Republicans are going to get in and I don't want to live in a mega America. I've got clients whose wildfire concerns are um, I'm really worried about the increase in anti-Semitism, anti-racism, anti I'm a member of a political party, which means half of the United States hates me. Um, another big one is gun violence. Uh, I grew up, you know, next to Detroit when it was Murder City, but Back then, it was two drug dealers shooting at each other with Saturday night specials. Now you've got mass shooting events um, in soft targets with uh, automatic weapons, semi-automatic weapons. It's just a different world. And clients say, well, I know statistically my child is not going to be part of a mass shooting event, but I know with 100% certainty they're going to go through active shooter drills and just the stress and you know they're going to see on hear news reports of somebody who's been shot and killed that looks a lot like them and every time i they walk out the door my spouse and i are going to worry about you know is today going to be the day so m most of the world doesn't have to deal with that so those are american wildfire concerns so if you're in a wildfire zone what do you do well you engage in fire prevention so that may be if your taxes, doing domestic tax planning, moving to a low tax state. Um, if you're worried about um, personal security, uh, it can be everything from homeschooling to um, personal security to um, getting a gun, getting a dog, et cetera. But if you, along with fire prevention, you prudently also would consider fire insurance, which would be an alternative citizenship or an alternative residence and having a fire escape plan. So if you perceive that the fire is getting too close, either to your fiscal house or you're going to affect your family wealth or and or wealth being, you can trigger the fire escape plan. Now, what's the fire escape plan? So it could be a go bag option. Oh my God, there's a hurricane that's hit. I need to bug out for a period of time. Where can I go that that works? Or a party that I don't like is got elected. I want to move somewhere for the next four years. So I'm going to be an American living abroad temporarily or permanently all the way to, I want to permanently leave the U S tax system. Um, and, you know, I'm looking at a 25%, uh, you know, which is the, the Biden's proposal, 25% tax um, unrealized capital gains every year. I'd rather pay 23.8% once and be done than 25% every year and whatever the estate tax burden is going to be. So different types of solutions for different clients. I think that that is a, a wonderful Wonderful analogy slash metaphor. It makes a lot of sense. Dangerous for a Canadian. These my West Coast clients understood it. I had <laughs> a bunch of New Yorkers looking at me with a side eye as the sky was orange behind them earlier this year. But uh, an apt one. Yeah, no, for sure. So there's lots of different options, and and I, th I think you broke it down really, really nicely. It's cost. It's time. It's desire, it's location, it's all these things that I need to be considering and balancing. And it, it's really, um, you have to come up with a plan that not only makes kind of financial sense, but that you can, I like to say, sell at the breakfast table. Yeah. So I'll get some clients who call me and say, I've just been sued. I've just been audited. I've just gone through a divorce. I want to move somewhere where there's no taxes and no lawyers. 
<laughs> Fine. We'll move you to Pitt, Karen Island. Only 67 people on earth have decided that that's where they want to live. Oh, no, no, no. I want schools, hospitals, an airport, you mm. know, these things. So interestingly, I would say, you know, 70 to 80% of the clients we move to what are thought of as high tax countries, but on a lower controlled tax basis. So, you know, if you're, for example, you know, which is amazing to Canadians, but Canada can be a tax haven to an American, to certain types of Americans. Well, how's that? Well, Canada doesn't have a gift tax, doesn't have an estate tax, doesn't have a wealth tax. We have higher income and capital gain tax, which George, I'm going to throw one equation um, at your audience, which is X times Y equals Z, or as Canadians say, Z. So X is taxable income, Y is rate, Z is dollars paid in tax. So the whole goal is to get the lowest amount of tax paid. Fine. Why is what it is. It's going to be whatever the legislature sets up. One of the things you can do is you know, instead of having ordinary income, have long-term capital gain. So that's going to be half of Y. Fine. But we can do lots of planning on reducing or even eliminating X. Zero times an even 99.9% .9 rate is still zero dollars paid. So Canada has a higher Y, except for New York City, because it has combined city, state, and federal tax. But generally, the Canadian tax rates, Y, are higher. But through pre-immigration tax planning, we can effectively greatly reduce and almost eliminate X. So therefore, Canada, familiar, close, can stay in the same time zone. Um, a number of different ways that an American can come to Canada because we have a free uh, free trade agreement. Um, a number of other other ways of doing it. Canadian dollar is lower. So Canada is surprisingly often one of the tools in the toolbox that we reach for. And And one of the things is, as a lawyer, one of the first things that you learn is who's my client? Well, my client's not a country like Canada. It's not a fund manager. It's not a developer. My client is my client. And I am a fee-based advisor. I don't take commissions. If we have to reach for a tool like a residence or citizenship by investment that pays a commission, I pay that back through the client. So they know that I, my advice is agnostic and uncomplicated. And one of the things I, I once had somebody say to me, you know, she said, David, you look at the world like Mr. Spock. I took it as an aspirational compliment. Maybe Very nice. True, but, you know, aspirational. She thought it was, I was emotionless. But so it's agnostic, you know, looking at the world, not as we wish it was, um, but how it is and how we can reasonably predict it to be. Uh, trying to eliminate the the rose colored glasses. And let's look at practical solutions that work, that you can sell at the breakfast table, that are livable for all the family members. And that may involve multiple jurisdictions, may involve different people because different, you know, some people may be going to school. Some people may be starting in their careers. Others may be retiring. So, you know, having something that that deals with, especially when you're dealing with multi-generational families, all the different concerns. That all makes sense. And it's, you did a great job, uh, great job explaining that. Why does planning halt commonly or, or 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 not get completed? Because the plan is not ignorance of the options. Life inertia, what I will call, you know, people have a number of things in their lives. It's very familiar to them. They've built up, they've got friendships, they've got familiarity. They they don't understand. Um, or, or really want to explore something else. So if you think of that kind of classic New Yorker magazine, you know, cover of the island of Manhattan. And so you had people that just never left Manhattan. You know, I'm not even going to take a bridge and tunnel over to New Jersey. Well, COVID drove them out of Manhattan. It overcame life inertia. All of a sudden they were in the Hamptons or wherever they were at. And they were saying, oh, oh my God, there's this thing called Zoom. Oh my God, there's, honey, did you know that there's this thing called Amazon Prime where they'll deliver whatever? And there's 
like DoorDash that will deliver food from my favorite restaurants. And I never thought I'd leave Manhattan. I was driven out of the place and, you know, life's not so bad. And so like with any inertia, a body in motion tends to stay in motion. So they started thinking, they're saying, well, okay, there's a New York City mayoral race and they're talking about increasing the taxes and gee, the tax rate's going to be higher and why don't I move to Miami or Palm Beach? Oh, okay, or why don't I explore Puerto Rico? Or why don't I, you know, once they're in motion and once they've overcome that life inertia, it's a lot easier for them to contemplate. So life inertia, ignorance, some people say, well, you know, using the firefighter example, which is, you know, I want to fight whatever my concerns are, I want to stay in the fight. It's like, okay, fine. Um, but, you know, fire chiefs, when they're dropping crews into a fire zone, always make sure that they have at least two escape routes. Why? The political winds blow in different ways and you don't want to get trapped there. So yes, that's great. If you want to fight that fight, that's great, but that shouldn't prevent you from engaging in fire prevention, fire insurance, and a fire escape plan, especially when you're talking about you know, your family, you know, wealth and well-being. And for higher net worth clients, they have a lot more of a budget and more options. So you'll hear, you know, some um, pundits say, well, you know, how dare they, you know, they leave and some even go so far. They started the fire. You know, Jeff Bezos didn't start global warming. Um, and, you know, how dare he create a company and a product that I thought valuable enough, or I'm talking to you on an Apple computer. How dare Steve Jobs create something? It's like, well, no, I, he created a product which I thought was worthwhile and worth more than the money I paid him for uh, and stuff. And because he deals with a global market and because he had a delivery system when things stopped being delivered, great um and thanks not that you know um every billionaire is a saint um they're not but they're they're not evil simply because they had a, a product or service which was attractive in a global market and a delivery mechanism to do it so if they want to you know um have something that works then then great and it's interesting also there, there there's a bit of an industry out there of people kind of bashing and I say, well, you know, so Sam Bankman frieds little brother said, oh, we're going to buy the, the island of Nauru. Well, I think somebody was having a few too many edibles one night and was musing about that. Or, you know, Peter Thiel is going to build, you know, these billionaires are going to build, you know, bunkers in New Zealand, or they're going to go into missile silos in Kansas. It's like, okay. If you are concerned, if your wildfire concern is everything from earthquakes to Yosemite finally going up to hurricanes to all the political and all the other things, and you want to bug out, how logically would you do that? You know, and there was a there's an author, a New York professor, who says, "Well, you know, I've flown in and talked to them about how are we going to save our, you know." protect ourselves from the Navy SEALs we have protecting our food in New Zealand. It's like very dramatic, sold a lot of newspapers lately. But if you would talk to me, I'd say, okay, well, you like New Zealand or Iceland? Great, they're isolated, pandemics, et cetera. Fine, you know, you're, you're going to go there. Air New Zealand has a, a nice flight that you can go there. You don't have to pay. You're going to arrive in New Zealand. If you want to get a panic room in your, in your nice house there, fine. But you know, you don't need to have, you don't need to have a SWAT team because all your neighbors in New Zealand have their own food. Why the hell would they want to bother, bother you? And you know, they, there's a, a, a group uh, that, you know, builds these kind of mobile homes. They claim they've done eight of them and shipped them to New Zealand. So I'm like, Okay, let's apply Occam's razor here. So you're somewhere in Texas. You built something that's like a double wide mobile home. You then have to take that to the nearest, to let's say the port of Los Angeles. You're going to transport this thing 
close all the roads because it's a double wide. You're going to get it onto a ship. Can't be a normal container ship. It's got to be a special container ship. That's going to ship across to New Zealand, arrive at one of two ports, be offloaded, shipped again. You got to close all the roads to the secret location where you secretly dug a hole, buried in it in the ground without any planning approval. And on this entire thousands of miles of journey, you never ran across somebody with a ca with a phone that had a camera that took a picture of this. And you did this eight times. Yes. <laughs> so am I questioning whether that is actually true? Again, Ockram's razor would say probably not, especially when I presented the alternative of cheaper, faster, better. So right. you don't have to fly me to an undisclosed location in the desert. With you know, I'm amazed that there's warm nuts on the flight, and you know, can be in a secret room with the you know, six billionaires who are quizzing me about Navy SEALs. I mean, again, I'm not calling him a liar. I'm just saying, okay, could have happened theoretically. Sure. Ockram's razor. I'm not going to take it for granted. Maybe not so much. Yeah. So as as for somebody who is who's been listening, they say this this makes a lot of sense. How much time should I be willing to or be to create a backup plan or to begin researching a backup plan? How how long is this going to take me and you and I should 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 we engage? Um. So the first thing would be to have a have a consultation where we really talk about kind of really looking, trying to look beyond the iceberg as to what is the driver? What is the motivation? What are we trying to do? Then getting into some family history. Uh, I mean, if you're if you have an Irish grandparent, you can get a an Irish lineage citizenship. That's going to cost maybe spending some money on a genealogist if you don't have the documentation, legal fees and government fees, a fraction. If you're Eric Schmidt, who didn't have that, and you wanted to buy what was he spent uh, several million euros on a Cypriot passport, um, so it's kind of what you what your needs are exact. So the first start is kind of what you know what it, what's the what can sell at the breakfast table. What are what what are your needs? What's your 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 pain points? What are the motivations, etc. And at the end of that, we really come up with okay. Here's a plan. Are you going? Is this a go bag option? Are you going to be an American living abroad? Um, client I just called before this was he was an American, but he's married to us to a Spaniard. Well, they don't have to move to Spain. They can move to Spain, but as an EU country national, she can move to twenty seven different countries. Hmm. And he, as the spouse of an EU national, can go and live in any of those countries. Doesn't need to make a golden visa investment, etc. Oh, okay. What if they didn't have that? Well, if they're going to spend more than six months there, they don't need to make a golden visa investment. I got nine-year-old twins. Um, I'm going to be somewhere nine months of the year. Uh, so now I'm going to be tax resident in that new jurisdiction. So, you know, what are the tax ramifications of that? So it's consultation. Let's figure out there may be at the end of that consultation, we'll Kind of, I can provide kind of here's what I think would be appropriate sometimes, especially when we're dealing with multi-generations. You know, we have a, a, a an initial fee that would be kind of like exploratory and strategy stage. And then I because what I do is I get and get rid of tangible residence citizenship or domicile, I tend to project fee as opposed to hourly fee. So I say, okay, here's the cost, here's the benefit. It's all in the written retainer. Do you want to proceed? And then I also identify who else do we need involved? That may be one of your current advisors. It may be a specialist uh, American lawyer. Uh, it may be, depending on where you're going to and how much time you're going to spend there, a tax lawyer in a new jurisdiction. Um, another thing, especially when we're dealing with families, is family law, divorce issues. It's not a black swan event. I have as I said, nine-year-old twins. So statistically, one of them is going to get divorced. Tax is a percentage of income. Divorce is a percentage of capital. I'm betting on my daughter because at nine, she's already into the bad boys. But, <laughs> um, you know, not that the West Bronx family treasure chest is that enormous, but, yeah. you know, 
it'd be much easier with proper planning. So should, you know, that marriage fall apart, she can say, well, you know, uh, honey, I'd like to give you, love to give you half, but that SOB father of mine put it up in a trust when I was eight years old. Um, that's much easier than, I know we're getting married in two weeks, but I need you to go and see this lawyer for independent legal advice on a prenuptial. That's a difficult conversation to have. No doubt. So, you know, it's that kind of planning. Cost depends on what we're trying to achieve, background, what's the concerns, what's the timing. You know, it's the classic, you know, quality, speed, cost, pick two. Well, we're not going to skimp on the quality. So the longer we have, the less it's going to be. If we're trying to do things, if you're trying to get fire insurance at the 11th hour, when the fire is bearing down on you, you're probably going to pay more. It makes sense. Well, David, thank you so much for coming on. Where can people get a hold of you? How can they How can they have that conversation? Well, um, hopefully, you'll have the spelling of my last name on uh, on the, uh, the the show notes. Uh, you can Google David Lesperance. It's Lesperance Associates. Um, there's a contact us there. I'm also on LinkedIn. I do almost daily um, posts on different issues. Um, and I have a lot of, they can subscribe to the blogs. I, there's a lot of media, uh, et cetera. And um, don't hesitate to reach out and uh, um, ask for a consultation. Excellent. Well, if you enjoyed this much as I did, show David your appreciation and share today's show with a friend who also appreciates good ideas. Find David at Lesperance and Associates. It's L-E-S-P-E-R-A-N-C-E. Again, David Lesperance. And uh, find him on LinkedIn. Check out the blog and all the great resources that he has on the website for helping you to better understand everything. And then have a conversation and see what finally makes sense for you, if anything. Thanks again, David. Great. Thank you. Till next time, remember, do your part by doing your best.